Supervisors Meeting, recorded July 20, 2021. I'm going to call the Portage County Board uh, to order. Uh, roll call. All right. We have 15 supervisors attending in person, five attending remotely, and we have five excused supervisors, Barry Joukowsky, Supervisor Anton, Supervisor Mua, Maresi, and Soik. Okay, thank you. Um, pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for the United States of America. One nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Invocation by Supervisor Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I appreciate the opportunity. Um, my colleagues, guests, members attending online. This is an invocation and the dictionary tells me that the invocation means the act or process of petitioning for help or support. And we all find ourselves there many times, right? In need of help or support. And we do that in many ways. It's done to, for each of us in very unique ways and very special ways. It's very personal. So therefore, out of interest of those very personal ways and in the interest of inclusion of all people who reflect individually on how they seek help and guidance, I ask that we take this moment to silently reflect on how we can be better, how we can respect one another, and how we can support one another when we all need help. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Review, review and approval of June 15, 2021 minutes. Motion by Supervisor Dubeck, second by... Second. Second by Supervisor Pataki. Any corrections, changes? All those in favor with aye? Aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes approved. Correspondence. Space and Properties Chair Jankowski, tour of city count, county city building report. County Clerk Fillin, out of county resolutions. Presentations, Parks Director Rose, 2020 Annual Parks Report. I always look forward to these. <laughs> Can you hear me? A little closer. All right. Speak up. Can you hear me? Is the button Excellent. on? I can. <clears throat> First of all, uh, I don't get the opportunity to come and say hi to you guys with COVID. I haven't seen most of you for a long time. Um, so it is nice to uh, see all of your faces and be able to talk to you uh, in person. Um, I'll try to make this brief. I know you got a Bucks game to watch, some Brewer games to watch. So um, uh, this is my third year uh, as the parks director. And uh, if you would have told me three years ago that uh, we'd be in the situation we are in the parks, I would have probably laughed at you. Uh, when I interviewed for this position, uh, the question they asked me uh, for my scenario uh, was, what am I going to do with the parks with less? And I thought, geez, that's not that difficult of a question, I guess. I, I must have answered it right because I'm standing here. Uh, but I thought, what a neat question to ask if I had to have a different one. And the question I thought would be, uh, Ryan, what would you do uh, if in the three years that you were here, you had a FEMA disaster, 
uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And in the middle of that, we're going to throw in a little brain surgery for you. How are you going to handle that? I thought, wow, that would be a great question. Uh, how would I answer that? So I actually thought, what would I say? I had no answer. I would have failed that interview. But what I did come up with is you would just figure it out. Keep a smile on your face and keep going forward. And that's kind of what we did with the parks. There is no playbook for COVID-19. There was no playbook for our parks. I will say, uh, you know, we had a lot of uh, uh, great guidance from the leadership, uh, all of you, Chris, uh, Ray. Uh, they gave us a platform to stand on and kind of work from. I will also say that uh, I want to thank all of you, uh, and I mean this uh, sincerely. Um, you didn't get involved in our day-to-day -day operations as a uh, committee, uh, as a group. You let us steer our ship, and that was very much appreciated because we changed day-to-day, -day, week to week. Uh, we had things we had to do, and I do appreciate that you guys did not get too much into what we were doing. You gave us great advice, and I think we, uh, we did a really good job. My goal uh, was to keep the ball rolling. Uh, we tried to keep going. We wanted our staff safe. We wanted our, our customers safe, but we wanted to keep moving uh, with the parks. We did not want to shut down. Um, I don't want to say COVID was a good thing for the parks uh, because it, it, it is something that uh, has, has costed many lives, but I will tell you this, uh, COVID really opened up uh, people's eyes to how important outdoor recreation, uh, green space is. If you had an opportunity to come to our parks this year, you have saw something that I've never seen. Uh, just people using every facet of the parks, whether it was from canoeing to kayaking to hiking or camping. Uh, so we, uh, I'm going to brag, we knocked it out of the park this year. Uh, my staff killed it. Uh, I'm super proud of them. Our revenues were through the roof. We didn't have anyone uh, call and say we had a COVID outbreak in our parks. Our staff really did a good job to try to keep the parks clean. Uh, so today I just want to touch base a little bit on some of our highlights, uh, and those are on the back page. If you have any questions through the report, you can ask me after or contact me uh, uh, at my office uh, at any time. So on the back, I just have the annual report highlights, and I wanted to share with some of you, uh, with you some of the uh, highlights that we had. Our camping was 20% 20 per, 20 up uh, over 2019, and 2019 was a very good year for us. That was our highest year. Um, we went to an online reservation system, so that did help with us, uh, less with uh, handling cash, and it made it streamlined, so it was a little more efficient for us. It worked out really well. Uh, but camping, uh, we we were turning people away. We were full. We were always full. And that has rolled into this year. I think we are actually ahead of where we were last year. So it is a, a, a pleasant surprise to see. We'll see how the weather holds out. Weather determines a lot. So if we have a nice fall, I think we'll beat last year's, and that would be quite the accomplishment. I didn't think we could do it, but it's fun to try. Uh, where we did uh, have some setbacks were lodge renters, and uh, that was our decision on that. We did not want people congregating, so we had limitations on how many people could be in the lodges. Uh, yeah, we took a little bit of loss on the revenue, but we thought it was the right decision to make. Uh, and overall, everyone understood. Those that we canceled, and we did cancel people's reservations, we did refund them um, uh, on that because we were the ones making the cancellations. Uh, we were forcing them not to come. Um, this year we did not open our hill, but in 2020 from January 1st to March 15th, we did open the hill. We had a good season with snow. We got lucky, COVID came in after the hill closed. So we were able to generate all that money uh, in early 2020. And then when COVID came in, we actually shut it down for the end of 20 to the early part of 21. Um, other Standing Rocks revenue that we brought in. So we bring disc golf, uh, mountain biking, dog park um and what else uh yeah those are the three that i have there uh, mountain biking 
uh, exploded on us. Uh, you couldn't even go to the bike shops and buy a bike, but we had made some major changes in our biking trails at Standing Rocks. We've always had mountain bike trails at Standing Rocks, but to be honest with you, they were no good. And you have to admit your faults. Our trails were no good. We redesigned them, and we went from making approximately $5,000 a year on that to almost $20,000 a year. So uh, those trails were uh, paid for by a, uh, a mountain bike group, Pasta Point Area Single Track Association. They raised the money to design and build those trails. Um, they, they did all of the work. Uh, we did put some signage up on them. Uh, but uh, they did all the work, and they have been uh, received very well. Um, Mr. Rose, country running. Mr. Rose, does yeah. that mountain bike trail, does that have light, lighting on portion of it at night as well? Or? Uh, no, the lights are actually, uh, we did 3K of ski lights. Uh, it was a donation from Edith and Dallas Pankowski. They purchased all of the materials, and our staff put them in. That is actually on the ski trail. If you do go there at night, and they do ride at night with headlamps, uh, you do get residual light uh, for about 2K of it, but there's part of it that you don't get any light on. But those are designed for the actual cross-country skiing. Thank you. Um, we also have cross-country running that takes place there, so all of the schools uh, in the area, uh, Rosholt, uh, uh, you know, Amherst, uh, we have uh, events, uh, regionals and sectionals that we hold at Standing Rocks Park. They're huge. There's thousands of people that come to those. Uh, unfortunately, last year, uh, we did not allow that. Uh, we worked with them. Um, uh, WIA didn't want it either, so we had, we had shut those down. They are bringing them back this year. Uh, I'm sure there are restrictions. And, and to be honest, the public did an amazing job. They stayed separated. They did what they were supposed to do, and that really helped us because we watched that. And if that got out of hand, we were going to shut things down, but it never happened. Uh, our boat launch uh, fees and permits, uh, everybody went boating, everyone bought a boat. Uh, our boat launch fees uh, really increased. A lot of the departments, the DNR included, uh, different uh, counties shut their boat launches down. Uh, I made the decision not to. Uh, I think it was the right decision. I think people could make sound decisions, stay separated, get their boats, go out and do their thing. So I decided to keep that open. Uh, our Jordan Nature Center, we did not open that because we have people congregating in a small area. Uh, the Dewey Shooting Range, again, the DNR shut down a lot of their ranges. A lot of the other counties shut down the ranges. I felt that we could keep our Dewey or our shooting range open and keep people safe, and, and we did. Uh, it wasn't that difficult. So uh, I think we did a great job this year. The revenue was great. I hope Jenny's happy. Uh, She's smiling. Jenny's happy. We had a meeting. She seemed happy. Uh, but uh, we, we did a great job. Uh, my staff uh, did an amazing job. Our seasonal staff uh, followed all the rules, and we're hoping to have another great year, and it looks like we are. So is there any questions? Nope, I don't think. Oh, I can't. Supervisor Machikowski, <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Thank you, Chairman. <laughs> Ryan, or Director Rose, I should say. Um, Mike. Up. Director Rose, um, I noticed that a lot of our, our parks have boat landings with extremely high water. Some of our boat landings are in disrepair, or, or in, I shouldn't say disrepair, um, they're, they're not usable. Um, Wolf Lake, for example, um, the boat landing is not usable. Are we looking at doing something at that, or are we just going to sit and wait till the water goes back down? Um, are we going to wait another year? Just a little input on that, if that's been talked about, or, or maybe a future parks agenda item yeah that 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 has come up uh quite a bit uh the, the, one of the biggest ones like you, you mentioned wolf lake uh as you're well aware you, you you know you know the lake pretty well uh there was no water in there years ago now it's it's full it's actually one of the nicest beaches we have right now uh it's it's really beautiful there um that lake filled up so much i know the water came over the road came up into that so it was a little bit unusable most of the lakes are starting to come down a little bit. Uh, we've noticed it at uh, Bear Lake. We've noticed it at uh, Emily now is starting to come down a little, Sunset. Uh, how we fix those, I think we're going to kind of have to wait till the water goes down because some of them don't have really an alternative to do. We do have a, and I hated to do it, but we had to because there were so many boats. They actually, at Lake Emily, they're using the side in the grass. We made a makeshift one temporarily uh, for them to use because they couldn't use it. So, yeah, we're going to have to fix them. Uh, they're busted up, and uh, 
I don't have the answer, Matt, uh, exactly how we're going to do it yet with the water being high, but it is on our radar. And Wolf Lake's not down. I was just there. Oh, I, and, and Wolf Lake, I don't know. That could yeah. be that could be out there, yeah. I was just there yeah. yesterday. So, thank Supervisors you. Astro. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Director Rose, welcome tonight. Thanks for your report. Uh, can you give us an update on, I know it's not officially out there, I don't think, but there's talks of, you know, putting a tubing run out and uh, over at uh, Standing Rocks. And I, I understand the DNR or somebody won't let it go out onto the lake. Well, it, yeah, it it's not the DNR. It, it's, uh, uh, they don't recommend it because of liability reasons. There's no, there's no place that shoots tubers out onto the lake. Uh, not only that, we don't know when it's going to freeze. You have to do monitoring of the ice uh, constantly. Keep, we can't drive our equipment out there. I'd hate to have that $250,000 plus piston bully go through the ice. Uh, so I had called uh, risk management. Their uh, recommendation was no, don't. We're not going to ensure that. We're not going to take that liability. They called the state. They recommended do not shoot anyone out onto the lake. So that eliminated a lot of the options that were talked about in the past. Uh, the Friends of Standing Rocks group came up with an alternative option. It has lots of difficulties and problems with it. One of them is that we have a high capacity well there to make snow right now. Uh, I don't know if all of you know this. I know our our our, uh, our group knows it. Our our commissioners know it. But I brought it up last week at our our meeting. Uh, that high capacity well, there is a divided line right on the ridge that goes through Standing Rocks. It actually divides the Great Lake Water Basin and the Mississippi Water Basin. Our well is on the Great Lake Water Basin side. I can legally not pump any water out of that side and pump it across the hill. Uh, so I can't make snow with that. That water all has to go, and that's not a county thing, that's not a state, that's an international pact that we have with Canada and all these surrounding states that that water must stay in there. So I am not going to be the one to pull that water out of there. Uh, so the only alternative would be to drill another well, which is just over the hill, take it out of that one, recreate a bunch of stuff, which uh, I don't think is uh, probably the right option uh, for us there. I, I, you'd have to clear hills, you'd ruin different activities, so there's a lot that goes into that. So it is at the commission level and, and we're discussing it and uh, uh, I'm with, with them in the fact that I just don't think it's doable at our park. So, Thanks for the update. Yep. And as I understand it, it's got a lot of big hurdles to it and there's not a lot of, uh, a lot of answers. Uh, we can want a lot of things, but sometimes they just don't work. So, Supervisor Gifford. That's not a question, just a uh, comment. In my four years on the commission, what really always impressed me was the positive, constructive uh, citizen group input, like the pasta group building the trails, and then the cross-country ski group, and the friends of the park who raised so much money for the new um, the new lodge, and just the participation of and the the learn to hunt group, you know, it's like one after another. Every meeting you could count on people not complaining but coming in with yeah, offers to help and fundraise and all that stuff. It was just a good, uh, really good experience. Yeah, the complaining came in year five. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anybody else? Have any questions? If not, that in my 18 to 20 years, this is probably the longest park report we've ever had. So. Yeah. <laughs> be brief. Yeah. So, right. Thank is, you, sir. Thank you. Uh, number six, we have the introduction of the new EMS coordinator, Andrea Krentz. Krentz? Sheriff? No, I'm not Andrea. Uh, <laughs> just so you're aware, uh, Andrea had uh, she had to go home early because she had a, a, a child that was sick. So um, you did get in your packet an introduction to Andrea. She's been here since March. She is very self-initiated and has been a, a godsend for me for our EMS coordinator. Um, I did want to say coming up in the future here, you're going to see announcement for the forums that we talked about um, prior to COVID in regards to getting out to. Uh, um, 
meet our providers along with our EMR groups. Um, Andrew has been out, out there working with all the providers and also the EMR groups for, for getting new members. So i um, very excited. She's been doing a great job. Um, I left a card on your desk. Um, so if you have any questions for her, um, she will try to make another meeting in, at a later date. But um, just so you all know, she, they, you see a picture so you can associate who she is. And if you have any questions, give her a shout. I think the first forum is going to be in uh, so late September or October, and uh, designation is unknown at this time. So, but it will be putting that out well in advance so that we can uh, get people out there and uh, see what our, our EMS uh, system does for the county. Thank you, Sheriff. Public notice. Members of the public who wish to address the, the county board on specific agenda items must register their requests at this time. With such comments subject to reasonable control of the county board chair as set forth in Robert's Rules of Order. Anyone from the public like to speak, please raise your hand. And name and agenda. Name and agenda. You start with uh, just anybody stand up and give me your name and, and item. Uh, David Iden, uh, da David Iden, number 13. Next. Who else? Anybody else? Steve Ellis, 13. Steve Ellis, 13. Linda Wanta, 13. Linda Wanta, 13. Anyone else? Brock Maddox, 13. Brock Maddox. Okay. Anyone else? Keith Jarowski, 13. 13. Anyone else? Anybody at home? Becky Cresson, number 13. Becky Cresson. Uh, I can't remember if we had that if we were taking stuff from home. It's up to you. I did it last time, but I wasn't aware that we weren't weren't allowing it. it wasn't supposed to be allowed. We don't have it was in our ordinance, wasn't it, Dave? That it's up to you. That's up to me. All right. Okay. Anyone else? We only got one person from home. That's okay. Yep. Confirmation of county executives' appointments and reappointments. If there's no objections, I will take them all at one time as printed. No objections. I will take a motion. A uh, motion by Supervisor Medine, seconded by Supervisor uh, Zastro. Any discussion? And I'll take a voice vote. All those in favor with aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Motion carries. <laughs> Number eight, out of sequence requests for reclassification for per human resource policy 3.11.46 from Portage County House Night Security Staff. Resolution number 121-2020-2022, submitted by the Health and Human Services Board, Human Resources, and Finance Committees. This resolution approves an out-of-sequence reclass for night security staff for the Health and Human Services Department. This is a budget adjustment and requires a two-thirds supermajority vote. Motion by Supervisor uh, Rakowski, seconded by Supervisor Dubeck. Discussion? Are we doing uh, electronic or are we doing a voice vote? <laughs> I think we should just do voice except for the code of conduct. Okay. We're going to do a voice uh, on all of them except for number 13. Uh, we wanted to try and kick the tires and see if we can get this program. Uh, that's why we'd had Craig here tonight as well to try and help work through some of these. But uh, with every, if there's no objections, we'll just do all of them tonight with a voice vote except for the number 13, the last one. So. I have a motion and a second. If there's no further discussion, all those in favor with aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Oh. Two thirds super majority vote? Yes. Oh, it's an atlas. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Anyway. Number nine. Uh, budget adjustment for land and water conservation division to fund the creation of a work plan to obtain water quality information in and around the village of Nelsonville. 
Resolution number 122-2020-2022, submitted by the Land and Water Conservation and Finance Committees. This resolution approves a budget adjustment to allow for the creation of a work plan to gather water quality information. This is a budget adjustment and requires a two-thirds supermajority vote. Motion by Supervisor Matt Joukowsky, seconded by Supervisor Zastro. Discussion? There's no discussion. All those in favor with aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Number 10, revising the process for selling county-owned real estate located in the village of Plover, former, former H2O development parcels. Resolution number 123-2020-2022, submitted by the Finance Committee. This resolution approves the revised process for selling the remaining H2O parcels. Motion by Supervisor Loddick, seconded by uh, Supervisor Splinter. Discussion. Supervisor Medine. Roughly how many parcels are left? <laughs> uh, approximately four. Stay tuned. Thank you. <laughs> They're going fast. Supervisor uh, Neville. Um, it says. Your mic. Thank you. It says, um, the top of the second page, there's a standing committee of Portage County Board of Supervisors. How is that committee established? I didn't hear her question. Mildred, can you sp repeat that and speak a little louder? We, we didn't hear you up here. Okay. On the second page at top, I'm just picking up in the middle of the sentence says a standing committee of Portage County Board of Supervisors to perform that approval. And my question is, how is that committee established? How many members does it have? So, Dave, go ahead. It's an already existing committee. The, later on in the resolution, what we indicate is that all of the final decisions that the staff puts forward after see what typically happens is we as staff members are contacted by interested buyers in these parcels and those individuals bring forward a written offer to purchase and what's happened in the past is those offers go first to the finance committee and then come to the county board for additional approval the only change in the process that is contemplated in this resolution is we're simply saying we'll still take it to the Finance Committee for their final review and approval, but then we don't have to continue bringing those transactions to back to the County Board for final approval. And so it's an already existing committee. And part of that was when we dissolved the KIPP, Capital Improvement Committee, uh, I'm trying. I'm going back, and we were charged with selling tax deed land. This is technically a tax deed land because it was taken back from from those parcels. So we had to make sure we had an avenue for it, where the finance committee goes and we have. They do a tour, they look at the property, and they say, yes, we're going to take it back, and there's a long process in taking back those pro those properties. And then when they sell them on the auction site, these are handled a little differently. So, The other reason why it's helpful if we can get final approval from the Finance Committee and not have to wait until the following county board meeting to approve it is that we don't want to lose a sale. And we almost lost a sale earlier this year, but we speeded everything up. And that was the one you may recall on Monday night before the county board meeting, finance met and approved it. And the very next night, which almost never happens, it was before the county board. Um, the buyer did not want to wait a whole other month. So that's why we did that one fairly quickly. But this, this process would allow us to shorten up the timeline so that we can get quick responses to the buyers who are interested in the properties. And these have all been very consistent. There hasn't been a lot of deviation, so it's 
kind of like the uh, roadmap has already been created to some point. So there's uh, Supervisor Medine, did you have your hand up or was your question answered or no? Okay. Supervisor Zastro. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm just curious, is there a minimum number of acres that must be purchased? Well, there's the, the parcels are already existing parcels. So I think the smallest ones are in the neighborhood of 10 to 15 acres. The other ones are, I think there's two 40s that are left. We just received another offer literally yesterday on one of the 40s. And then there are two smaller parcels closer to the interstate, which are somewhere between say 10 and 15 or 18 acres a piece. Um, there's their standalone existing parcels so it's not going to be any acreage size smaller than that if people want to talk to us about subdividing we're not really interested in doing that because then you have to survey it and there's expense and so far we haven't had to do that so we really don't want to start now right we're, we're getting close to the end hopefully on on that uh, whole project out there and we're getting out of the land owning business for the county so um, business parks and <laughs> anything else? Anybody else have any questions or comments on this? We have a motion and a second. If there's no further discussion. All those in favor with aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Number 11. Authorizing a change in scope of work for BWBR Dewberry to include a phase one feasibility study of the county city building as part of the government facility project. Resolution number 124 2020 2022 submitted by the Space and Properties and Finance Committees. This resolution approves including the phase one feasibility study to be included in the scope of work for BWBR Dewberry. There is a Scrivener's error that we will correct in the uh, be, be it further resolved clause. There is two E's at the end of resolved, so we will correct that. Motion by Supervisor Jankowski, seconded by Supervisor Dodge. Discussion? Supervisor Jankowski. This kind of came about due to our survey of this building. When we went through the building, we started talking about how do you move the walls? Can something fit? What are the new regulations that will say the court has to have this, the court has to have that? We don't have the knowledge, nor do we have anybody locally that could help us. That's why Dewberry will hopefully give us an idea. Can we put the courts back in this area? Can we do the things that we would like to do, or can't we? And that's why this resolution is before you. So we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? No further discussion. All those in favor with aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Was somebody nay? I did. Did you get that? Nay. Thank you. Number 12. Establishing November 2nd, 2021 as the official annual meeting date of Portage County Board of Supervisors for 2021. Resolution number 125-2020-2022, submitted by the Executive Operations Committee. This resolution sets the annual meeting date as November 2nd, 2021. Motion by Supervisor Pataki, second by Supervisor Rakowski. Discussion? All those in favor with aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Number 13, resolution adopting and enacting changes to section 3.1 of code of ordinance, the Portage County Board of Supervisors, structures and responsibilities of standing committees and standing appointments of the Portage County Board by adding subsection 3.1.5 one entitled Code of Conduct. Resolution number 126 2020 2022 submitted by the Executive Operations Committee. This resolution amends Chapter 3 of the Code of Ordinances to include a Code of Conduct for County Board Supervisors. There are a couple instances of um, 
the parallel construction not lining up. So um, Corporation Council and the County Clerk's Office will work on that to correct it. I need a motion and a second to put this on the floor. Okay. Okay. Um, I need a motion and a second to be. Able, I'll take a motion and a second to get it on the floor. Motion by Supervisor Lydic, second by Supervisor Honnell. Uh, discussion, and we have some people from the public that want to speak. Dave Eiden. Yep, I will. Okay. I'll read it. <laughs> I'm Dave Eiden from Stevens Point. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak in regards to uh, Code of Conduct of Adoption in my brief review of what we have pending here as a resolution to vote and approve. Uh, I do see some things that come, come to question immediately. In part, I almost believe that there's a certain redundancy to adding some of this in regards to the fact that we already have some things in place uh, to adhere to and that I guess would be codified to hold those accountable who may decide to step out of line, for example, where uh, we talk about uh, respect, treat county official staff, county board supervisors, committee and board members and all public patients, courtesy, civility, respect, even when there are disagreements. I'm sure that's already in place here. Uh, to me, that just doesn't warrant needing this resolution, for one. Uh, I have to wonder if the Code of Conduct is designed to squelch public, co public comment on issues at times of a divisive nature, uh, subject to prosecution under this resolution, which you're currently debating adopting. Um, in uh, the section of honesty, uh, number two, be prepared to make decisions when necessary for the public's best interest, whether those decisions are popular or not. Again, comes back to the f fact that we may want to squelch public comment if we don't like where somebody is going with this, subject to prosecution under this resolution. Um, you know, that being the case, is it in the public's best interest if these decisions are not popular? And then why do we even bring these things forward? Personally, uh, looking at this brief review of the Code of Conduct, it seems to me it's redundant as we probably have these things in place already. I hadn't reviewed the prior Code of Conduct that this would be added to either. So uh, is it in the public's best interest? I think we need the public to come forward and many times people don't. I'm here today to at least have some input, and I would strongly encourage you to vote against this resolution, as I think we already have mechanisms in place to handle some of these things. I guess without further review, uh, at this time I would leave it as that. It seems that although there is a certain ambiguity in some of the resolution also as to how we would decide somebody's in violation and how we would choose to move ahead and prosecute also. So, uh, again, in my opinion, I would uh, urge a vote against this resolution. Let's leave what you have standing in place as far as our code of conduct and where we deem necessary investigate uh, any violations and a potential prosecution at that time. Thank you for your time. Steve Ellis. Steve Ellis from Junction City, thank you. Um, I fear that much of what I'm going to say is going to be repeated. I would have rather gone a little later, so I'm going to just bear with me. This is only can, about three can minutes. Can you speak up a little bit louder, sir? I am not opposed to a code of conduct, but this is uh, this one, the way it's worded, could cause as many problems as it solves. My first concern is that it's somewhat like censor censorship. These days, there is no way to predict what some people will find offensive. 
To many people, simple disagreement or a different point of view is offensive. This resolution is an attempt to curb offensive behavior, but is that really an important goal for county business? Personally, I don't think so. For example, I'm going to skip this. If we censor people with fear of violating a code of conduct, we'll be encouraging exactly what we don't need, people who say one thing and do another. My second concern is the honesty section, which should be completely reworded. There is a sen sentence in there which states that supervisors should be prepared to do what's best for the county, regardless of whether or not it is popular. This is bad. There is one kind of business, usually not that controversial, such as putting in a culvert or managing a solid waste site, where the government is actually enhancing most people's ability to build productive lives. But there is another type of business, usually very controversial, such as shutting down businesses and schools, which when done significantly interferes with citizens' ability to lead productive lives. This type of business is contrary to the county's mission statement and should be avoided at all costs. I fear that the honesty section of this resolution will be used in the near future to take us all right back into the same COVID mess that we just got out of. My third cons uh, concern is the repeated use of the word impartial. None of us are impartial to anything, and UW Stevens Point is filled with professors who will verify that. We all bring everything in our backgrounds to bear on every issue we face each day. It would be more honest up front to acknowledge the truth of our partiality. The resolution should not advocate for impartial behaviors because that's not possible. As a solution to the problem of poor conduct, it would be great if you as a board would revisit your own mission statement Every time you stray from the mission statement providing uh, the mission of providing fiscally responsible services to the people of Portage County, you find yourselves with conduct issues. Thanks. Linda Wanta. I am going to pass. Everything has been said. Thank you. Brock Maddox. Rock Maddox from Plover. A lot of the stuff that I was going to say has been said already, but um, there's a couple concerning points in here. One of them that uh, we're going to ask you to vote no on this code of conduct today. Um, also, that uh, the word equity should be dropped out of this code of conduct and it should be equality. Um, also, we have an issue with the second bullet point on the honesty section of the ordinance. Uh, we believe that telling supervisors to make decisions they know are against what their constituents want is the exact opposite was <clears throat> of why supervisors are elected to re represent the people of this county. Having it written in there gives a free reign to supervisors to use it as an excuse to push any personal agenda they want, regardless of what the people of this county actually want. We've watched it happen over and over in the past year with lockdowns, masks, restrictions on small businesses, road diets, and bike lanes. So we're going to ask you guys to vote no on this co code of conduct today. Thanks for your time. Keith Kodrowski. Keith Kodrowski, Stevens Point. Yeah, a lot of things bad that I want to say. Ben said equity, that word. That word just doesn't belong in anything we do. Equality, equity, sorry. I get one chance to treat people equal. I don't get extra chances to be treat someone equal. It's, it's a bogus word. Number two in section D is definitely a line. If you're gonna impose an ordinance on people that's unpopular to people, I don't even get the logic to that. You work for us. 
it better be popular. You're working for us. Popular decisions, unpopular decisions shouldn't be made by you if the people feel it's unpopular. Makes no sense. I, just, I advise you all, vote against this. Absolutely unnecessary. Thank you very much. Uh, the last one was Becky uh, had asked to speak, and I was questioning it when last time I allowed someone to speak from the home, it, and it was reminded the next day that members of the public attending remotely will not have the opportunity to speak during the meeting. The deadline for sending comments is 48 hours. It's on the top of our agenda, so therefore, uh, Becky, I'm not going to allow you to speak uh, per our uh, agenda that was pushed forward. So. Those are, sir, those are uh, county board supervisors that are on TV that are speaking, so. Go ahead. Yeah. Linda Wanta. Yes. Linda Wanta. Everything that I was going to say has already been said, but when there is one person that is up there that wishes to speak and has great knowledge on, on a whole bunch of subjects in this matter, and you refuse to let her talk, is un, un, unacceptable because you know who she is and you know how smart she is and that is why you refuse to let her speak. On the question of equality and equality, equity and equality, equity allows you to develop enlarge and supplement or override rigid or any system of law. That means that gives you the power and not to listen to the people that you already put in your later statement of not wanting to go by what the people say. So you're allowing yourself that little underwritten law. Um, equality means you have to be of a state of equal. And the synonym, synonym to equality is equivalence and sameness. That synonym, synonym does not apply to equity. So if you want to be fair and you want to be equal, then the word should be equality. So you can't change and it has to be equal. You can't underline, give yourself a little nudge room to override a law you don't deem is reasonable and especially if it's followed uh, in part D where you can make a decision that's not in the public's best interest. That's defeating equality and listening to the people and what um, somebody had set up here about you working and listening to the people and this is what the people want that live in this in this county so you can't just your little group go ahead and change your mind and write it up so well we got to say so because we think we know better we live in America for a reason people are smart they have they have thought and they have reason besides for the decisions they make for themselves. And you need to honor that, and you need to be equal to that. Um, so as far as you being able to make a decision that this business is important, that business isn't important, uh, you want to mandate or change to law that you have to do this, you stay home, you don't stay home. What happens with the school system? No, you can't do that. People have to be able to make that right and you cannot override the public's interest because you think it's better for them. The people know what's better for them. Thank you very much for your time. So we have a motion and a second. And I just wanted to be clear that the reason that I can't let 
Becky Crescent speak is not because I know who she is and not because she's a smart lady, because we publish an agenda and I need to follow this agenda. This was put out to everybody and we all have to follow the same rules. I had made a mistake in the past where I allowed someone from home to speak. It was pointed out to me later and that's why when Miss Crescent had even asked to speak tonight, I paused and asked and they thought it was up to me. Then our Corp Council continued to look through our agenda that is published a week in advance, stating all the rules and letting everybody know what they are, was on here and is the one that's always been on here for over a year. So that's why Mrs. Uh, Crescent cannot speak, not for any other reason. So I just want to clarify that. So, Supervisor Jakowski. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Under letter B, fairness number two um, when I read this at home when I got my packet it says make decisions and recommendations based upon research and facts involving county staff and stakeholders and consider long consider short and long-term goals I think we're missing constituents in there I realize excuse me we'll be the first one on the code of conduct <laughs> good thing it didn't pass yet sorry about that so, um, I think we're missing the word constituents in there. Now, could they be considered stakeholders? That that's tough. Uh, are are all constituents stakeholders? No, some are stakeholders. I, I I just think we need constituents in there. And since we answer to our constituents, I may make a decision that's not popular with somebody from the city of Stevens Point because my constituents. Maybe aren't have a different opinion than those in the city of Stevens Point on an issue. So I think we need to have constituents in there, and since our constituents are who elect us to represent them, I think they should be put in there first. So I'd like to make the amendment that says um, involving, right after involving, it would be constituents, and then a comma, then county staff and stakeholders, and consider short and long-term goals. So all I'm asking is after involving that we in include the word constituents. Second. We've got a motion and a second by Supervisor Gifford. Any other discussion on constituents? Supervisor Zastro. Thank you. Uh, this is just a point of clarification for me. Uh, are the constituents not covered under uh, stakeholders? He had asked that question or stated that earlier, and he said it was a fine line. That's why he wanted to add the word constituents as well. I'm fine with that. So if there's no further discussion on adding constituents, Mildred, Supervisor Neville. I have a question. If, if we add the word constituents um, to, I mean, who are stakeholders if they're not constituents? I mean, and I could give, and this was my thought on it, if I may, Mr. Chair. Go ahead. The county may have a stakeholder, and a stakeholder in the county may be an investment firm from outside the county, which is none of our constituents. So, and a constituent of mine may have an opinion on a subject. They may feel a certain way about a subject, but it may not directly affect them. So therefore, they're not a stakeholder in it. So that's where I, I kind of thought we need to include the constituents. Supervisor Robbie. I think all of our county residents are stakeholders. However, if it helps some people to distinguish it, I don't think it hurts all because we're our constituents. We're, I think stakeholders refers to constituents, but if it helps some people to further de delineate it, I don't think it's harmful to put it in there at all. Any other? I think you could take constituents and take out stakeholders. Um, but you know, if it if it helps people, then I don't have an issue with it. But I think stakeholders covers it. Supervisor Neville. Well, that was my thought. Was that stakeholders? I mean, I thought stakeholders. I thought that was constituents because in some sense. Everybody in the county is affected by what's done. So I don't 
know why we need the word stakeholders if we put constituents. So we only have one 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 motion on the floor right now for uh, one amendment, and it is to add constituents. Unless uh, Mr. Uh, Jakowski would like to do anything else with it or amend his his motion. Uh, I would leave stakeholders in there because there are, are people from outside the county that, that may be stakeholders. You know, we could go back to argue the fact that uh, B.R. Dewberry is, is one of the stakeholders in the game. You know, they, they're they a consultant firm that works for us. They're a stakeholder in the game. Um, the people that come to us um, and advise us on financial situations, on our bond sales, they're a stakeholder. So that's that's why I differentiated the constituents versus stakeholders. Supervisor Johnson, you had comments to add. I see you shaking your head, but you're probably yeah. just agreeing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Th thank you, Mr. Chair. I was just agreeing with Supervisor Jakuski. The stakeholders are a unique group of, of individuals and support the idea of adding constituents. Any other discussion on the amendment to add constituents? If not, all those in favor with the amendment say aye. 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 Opposed? Amendment carries. Back to the original resolution. Supervisor Medine. I do have a question for either the author or the committee in the under fairness um, equity. How would it change either the intent of the ordinance or the application of the ordinance if the word equity was changed to equality. Dave, can you help me with that one? <laughs> I guess my take on that would be that the concepts of equity and non-discrimination, which are both mentioned together in number one, are concepts and principles that go together. Um, as I read number three under letter B, under fairness, encourage diverse and inclusive public participation. Diverse and inclusive is everybody. So I think the notion of equality is in there already in number three under B. So, Supervisor Medin, you had a follow up? So, how would it change the application of it? What you're asking is if we change the word from equity to equality? Yes, how would it change, how would it change the intent of the sentence? Because it removes the notion of of equity from from point number one. In, inclusivity and, and equality, again, I think is already in there under number three. And I grew up understanding that non-discrimination is equality and so, but you're making the case that non-discrimination is not the same as equality. It is equity. It's a puzzle for me, but I've only had 70 years of those <laughs> in distinguishing those two terms. <laughs> Are you making a motion, Supervisor Medin? I'm, I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get to the. Okay. Standard. Super. Okay, Supervisor Dodge, then Supervisor Gifford. Um. We had quite a discussion about the word equity some months back. And um, actually, I did a little research after all of that discussion. There is definitely a difference between the word equality and equity. Um, personally, I also grew up believing in equality. Um, equity gives some people maybe some preferential treatment which I don't believe we should be doing if we're going to be neutral and objective. Um, if you noticed, I was noted as excused. I had another meeting, so I wasn't uh, present to vote on this. Um, I would not have supported the change to the word equity, is my understanding. It was changed by executive committee. The original uh, writing was equality. Is that not true? No, that wasn't changed. Well, well the word, that word was added, correct? No. No. Did Supervisor no. Moresi add that word? <clears throat> Supervisor Moresi added the word inclusive under item B3. 
So he added encourage, diverse, and inclusive. There was no change to number one under fairness. Well, I would not have supported having the word equity in here. And so therefore I will make a motion to replace the word equity with equality. Seconded by Supervisor Laddick. Any other discussion on, uh, we are uh, B1, changing the word from equity to equality. And we have a motion and a second. Uh, Supervisor Robbie, then Supervisor Honnell. I'd just like to have someone from the- Can you get a little closer to the mic, please? Sorry about uh, that. Yes. Um, I would just request that somebody from the committee just tell us why they put the word equity as opposed to equality in there. Uh, I'm just trying to understand, um, if, if we were to take a different word than equity, what word would it be in, in here so we'd better understand Equality. the differentiation? I'm not sure that that's correct. So uh, I, for someone from the group, I'm wondering why equity rather than equality, if they could expand on that a little bit. The group did not create the, uh, this was uh, probably a work product of myself, uh, Kayla helped, I believe, a little bit, and Corp Council. From what I had originally brought forth, it needed to be massaged or whatever you want to say. It needed to be uh, gone through, and that's what had happened. And I believe we had a uh, Tiffany uh, was one of the uh, Wonderland was one of the attorneys in the Corp Council's office that was working on it, and then Dave uh, took a final. Uh, look at it, and then it was sent over to us. And we were we were also using models of codes of conduct that we received from various other counties as well. So we were trying to meld all of these together and uh, come up with a a product that the committee could discuss and then bring forward. Go ahead. Just I'm sorry. Just a follow up question. So if we took equity out of there. Somebody who is, in, and I know that sometimes we paste and and you know how we put things together. But if we take it out of there, what are we losing from the point of view of the people who did present this or put forward? Do you have a strong feeling about equity? And if so, just some information as to why equity in there is important. I'm not opposed to it. I'm not for it. I just don't know why equity rather than some other word. If nobody has an idea as to why equity is in there, if they don't have a reason to say, hey, equity is important to be in there because of the following, then it seems to be a point we could put any word in there. So I'm just wondering why equity in there, and if we take it out, what do we lose? Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Um, I just quick Googled a simple definition for equity uh, to address Supervisor Robbie's point and the definition, the first one that pops up is, it's the quality of being fair and impartial. So if we add the word fairness and substitute that, I would think those meanings would be uh, synonymous. Supervisor Honnell and Supervisor Gifford. Um. <clears throat> I'd like to use a simple example of when I think about equity, <clears throat> that it's not the same as equality. Mm -hmm. Years ago, people who used wheelchairs could not access businesses. They could not access voting sites. There were all number of civic engagement that people who needed a different kind of access, um, ramps, elevators, etc. It was equitable to make those changes so that individuals who needed those kinds of supports could be treated equally. Good point. There are many people in our community who are at a disadvantage when it comes to being treated equally. That's just a real simple example. <clears throat> But if you asked um, any, if you asked people with disabilities, have they been treated equitably by opening up voting and being assisted with registration and being uh, at ease to get into voting, the polling places? Um, to me, that's a, that means that we're creating an equitable environment so that people can experience 
equality. Supervisor Gifford, then Supervisor Dodge. Yeah, you know, we went around and around about this a uh, couple months back, <clears throat> and I said uh, then the same thing I'm going to say now, and I read out the Merriam-Webster dictionary mm -hmm. definition of equity, and it was something like uh, treating people with justice and fairness, uh, impartiality, et cetera, because it seemed that there was an organized uh, group uh, working to undermine the work of the Diversity um, and Inclusiveness Committee by redefining our language for us. There was one comment that uh, equity meant socialism. You know, if we're going to govern ourselves, we have to govern ourselves from a common understanding. Uh, you know, some people cite the Constitution. Okay, well, then let's have a common understanding of what words mean. Uh, when we're going to say something. So if the word equality were replaced uh, in place of equity, you know, it's a slight difference. I'm not going to object to that. But uh, it, understand that equity means justice, fairness, impartiality, you know, just the normal common sense uh, consensus reality that we need to operate and govern ourselves. Thank you. Supervisor Dodge, then Supervisor Splinter. Um, if you remember that discussion, um, we talked about Webster's dictionary definition of equity. And there was a county board supervisor that had a totally different description of equity. So I guess somewhere in here we ought to state that we're going to use Webster's dictionary for the definition of our terms because I think that's very important and you know it makes a difference who did I say was next after Super Splinter. Supervisor Splinter then Supervisor Neville again I think when we have a code of conduct it should be clear and and uh, to everyone and without a subjective term in there uh, equity. I'm 70 years old, and I I hardly ever in my life heard the term equitable, or until recently. Uh, and then again, at, uh, to repeat, I had the, one of the county board meetings. We had like three different definitions of it, uh, and equality to me has one definition. Uh, equity. It could be it could be swayed any which way, and I think to keep it clear and concise uh, to everyone. Equality, I think, is the better word. I'd like to see equity uh, eliminated from future resolutions as, I, as again, it, uh, it's, it has subjective meetings to a lot of different people, and I think we've got to be clear and concise when we make these resolutions. Thank you. Supervisor Neville. I would, I would um, not think that replacing equity with equality is a good um, I don't think that conveys the meaning of fairness if the word is to be replaced I think it would be replaced with fairness fairness is a pretty common word and I think people have a pretty good idea about fairness that seems to fit um, so I would be opposed to changing equity to equality. Supervisor Gussell. I think that any definitions or any of these wordings in these ordinances should have a definite meaning so that it can't be misconstrued in a different manner. You should choose words that are to the point. You don't have to take the Anybody from home have any supervisor Pataki? Mr. Chairman, I agree. I'm listening to all these words, and as far as I'm concerned, I think the word fairness uh, that the uh, supervisor just mentioned a couple of minutes ago is would be the word. I mean, fairness is fairness. You, how can you say? There's a, it, it, it has different meanings. 
Anybody else from home? Okay, we have an amendment on the floor to change the word equity to equitable. Still. Equality, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> to equal, start this over again. So <clears throat> uh, we have a, a motion and a second. If there's no further discussion, uh, all those in favor with aye. 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 Opposed? No. 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 Aye. Aye. The, and the clerk will call the roll. <laughs> we vote by phone. Uh oh. You want to try it? Okay, everybody. Uh, I should say. Mm -hmm. It should pop up. Yeah. So we're voting on the amendment. Equity to equality. Yes. yes. Did it come up there? No. Yes. Yeah. So, for me. Can you put it on there? I don't see it either, Kayla. Right. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chair, I've lost connection, but I will vote in the affirmative of the amendment. Let's hold on. If it's easier for her to call the roll, I have to vote. We're just going to have the clerk. We're going to have the clerk do a roll roll call, folks. <laughs> My apologies. All right, ready? There. Yep. Okay. Uh, Supervisor Haga. Aye. Supervisor Morrow. Aye. Supervisor Pataki. Yay. Supervisor Dubeck. Aye. Supervisor Robbie. Nay. Supervisor Johnson. Nay. Supervisor Gustel. Hey. Supervisor Reeser. Is he there? We lost him. Okay. Supervisor Splinter. Aye. That was an aye. Yes. Supervisor Dodge. Yes. Supervisor Matt Jankowski. Aye. Supervisor Do uh, Jankowski. No. Supervisor Gifford. Nay. Supervisor Laddick. Aye. Aye? Yes. Okay. Supervisor Neville. No. Supervisor Rakowski. Yes. Supervisor Zastro. Nay. Nay. Supervisor Martinson. You're know. muted, Supervisor Martinson. Or thumbs up or thumbs down. <laughs> no. Sorry about that. Thank you. I'm not a lip reader. <laughs> uh, Supervisor Medine. I, I lost my voice. I. <laughs> <laughs> Young man there? Thumbs up or thumbs down. And Supervisor Hunnell. Yay. Okay, so we have uh, 9, 4, 10 against, 6 excused. So, uh, amendment failed. So, would anyone like to make an amendment? Supervisor Robbie. I would. Before I make the amendment, I would remind for just the state that we have people who spend their lifetime discussing our documents and the words that are in our documents. So, to say that there's no ambiguity regarding words or that we could ever create a document where there wasn't some ambiguity, I, I think is um, wishful thinking. Having said that, I would like to exchange the word equity for fairness, because I would like to make sure that, I would like to think that people can support that as opposed to a word that some people have more concerns with. Second. So we've got an uh, amendment to change equity to fairness by Supervisor Robbie, seconded by Supervisor Johnson. Any other discussion on this topic? If not, on the amendment to change it to the word fairness, all those in favor with aye. 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 Opposed? Well, that one carried. We're getting closer, guys. What's next? Anybody else? Anybody at home have anything? Supervisor Neville. Um, under letter F, number two. F2. 
where it says a person may submit a verified complaint to the Office of Court Counsel. Um, what's verified mean? What's verify mean? What's that? I mean, that, since that, in, the, in number one, anybody can submit, can come to the chair about a perceived violation. But then at number two, then anybody can submit a verified complaint. I just wondered what is meant by verified complaint, verified in. What's the criteria? The way that phrase is used in section 3.6 of our ordinance um, means that the complaint filed with my office, who then has to determine whether or not the complaint should move forward to the ethics committee, which now is um, the executive operations committee, because we uh, did away with the ethics committee, uh, means that the complaint must be based in fact versus opinion, essentially. So it's got to be verified by factual allegations, just like a regular complaint that you would file in court. So, so I guess what kind of confused me is, so in number one, if somebody thinks there's a violation, they can go to the chairperson, Mr. Hagan. Or whoever that is. <laughs> or whoever that may be yeah, as the document goes be. forward <laughs> um, so I guess so that same person could come to you with something verified I mean I, I, it's not steps in other words it's not you present it to the chair of the board and then it moves to you Right. I, I do not believe it's you have to do number one first, then then number two. These are just options and alternatives. I, I will tell you, though, Mildred, that whether it's on there, it follows that path anyway. I usually get the calls, the emails, the, uh, the conversations about this stuff, but it really doesn't even uh, specify on there what the chair should do with that information. Right. So I guess that's what I wasn't clear yeah. about is so... What, what's the point of number one? Just, you can do that? Yeah, it's, we've got other ordinances and things that don't seem like they have any finality to it or whatever, and that doesn't seem like it has a direction to it or it has any, any uh, follow-up. So, on number one, the, having, the number one says any person who has reason to believe that the code of conduct has been violated may contact the Portage County Board of Supervisors chairperson and report the details of the uh, previous violation to the chair. Okay, then what? <laughs> I mean, it's at that point, I guess it's my responsibility to direct them to go to Corp Council. I, my, I guess my response would be. It depends. We, we can all think up a hypothetical situation of what the facts might be. It's just offering another outlet and alternative to somebody who's got, you know, suggestions or not necessarily answers to somebody who's got a gripe or a grievance if they want an opportunity to bring it forward, but they don't want to go through the formal step of filing an actual written complaint. Maybe it doesn't, you know, it's not all that important to them. Maybe they feel they missed a point, so they want to consult with somebody. Um, just because it says in number one, the county board chair, I mean, for, as, as the chair points out, he may decide if somebody came to him to direct the individual elsewhere, and there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, thank you. Supervisor Dick Majikowski. Thank you, and, and I guess maybe this will help answer Mildred's question a little bit, and maybe this is how I see it, and it's maybe not how Chairman Hagel interprets it or Corporation Council interprets it. Our Corporation Council office is a busy office. They're doing tons of things. They got CHIPS, TPR. And when he reports to our committee, which I happen to chair, he never tells me that they're for lack of work. But 
I can see that maybe somebody has a complaint, and we make controversial decisions. There's decisions that we made tonight that are probably controversial to somebody. Somebody may be hot under the collar, mad about it. They'll contact Al because Al gets those emails. He stated that earlier, and they'll say, this person said this, 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 and this. And Al will say, well, if you would go back and listen to the tape, you're – you're misconstruing that. You're adding words that they didn't say. Al can settle it at that point in time, and that person settles down, and they maybe say, yeah, Al, I guess you're right. I was just a little hot under the collar, and it's done. If they feel it needs to go further, if Al feels it needs to go further, he takes it to Corporation Counsel's Office. If we don't have that step in there, Corporation Counsel's Office is going to be bombarded with a bunch of emails that they don't need to see and that they don't need to spend time on. Emails, so, phone calls, whatever. So I think it's maybe a good first step that they consult with Al and Al will say, well, I think you're reading into it because we can go back. Let's watch the video together. They never said that. But sometimes what's said in what the viewing audience or even a fellow supervisor hears is different than what was actually said. And maybe Al can offer a little mediation. Hey, let's get together with the person that said this. Maybe that isn't what they meant. So I, I would like to keep that first step in there. I don't want to see getting rid of that. I, I guess I can see the, the, the value of it, but at the same time, it needs more because of the fact that of some of the things that I heard you say is consult with, and, and uh, it doesn't say that. It doesn't have anything in there, you know, that you're, you're looking for uh, to consult with uh, the county board chair uh, to see if it rises to such an area of, of an offense. So those are just some of the things that I'm, I'm looking to the rest of you or I, anyone to help with it. we need to leave some things up to your leadership abilities. Um, that's why they pay you the but big it, money. Right. Um, but it doesn't say that in here. It doesn't even say that they're supposed to just get my opinion or input from the chairperson. At our, our ordinance doesn't say that someone's speeding. It says that they should get a ticket. But it's sometimes up to the officer's discretion if they have a clean driving record, haven't been pulled over forever, that they let them go. You know, you, you have to have a little of that discretion. If you spell it out here step by step, we're going to have a document that weighs more than I do. <laughs> wow. Big document. <laughs> um, you know, I I can think of a, a resolution that that's before us uh, or an ordinance that we have that doesn't have any finality to it, and it's the one that talks to uh, if you want to put something on an agenda. It says that you must bring it forward before the chair of that committee, and you have 60 days to bring it forward. The chair has to put it on the agenda says if they don't put it on there in 60 days that you talk to the county board chair okay someone comes in and has a conversation with me then what 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 do i what per our ordinances or directions or bylaws am i required or has to happen there's nothing there's no finality to it there's it's open ended and and i feel that some of that exact same thing is here and we have just had that discussion you know uh, about a week ago about that particular case so I guess I'm trying to bring it out so everybody understands what we're up against and what I'm trying to button up and make sure we don't have in the future is something that when we're all not sitting here and when I'm not sitting here what was the intent of this what is the direction or what did we want them to do I believe Mr. Chair I believe that instance is in Robert's rules orders I'm not I don't have my book in front of me but I, th I think you as a chair are required to put it on then according to Robert Trules' order. I'm not 100% sure on that, um, but if I remember right, there's, and we, we've adopted Robert Trules' order, so yep. you, sometimes we have to refer back to that, and I realize that not everything's cut, right, based and clear. Supervisor Johnson, then Supervisor Pataki. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I guess I'm agreeing with uh, Supervisor Tukuski. Um, on this and, and about the adoption of Robert's rules and its its guide really to help us um, conduct business. I, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, if this is adopted, this document is adopted, doesn't this then hold the county board chair to certain comportment and expectations regardless? So if someone comes to the county board chair and the county board chair refuses to do anything about it, the county board chair would probably be in violation of this very, very set of standards. So I don't know that we necessarily have to delineate every action the county board chair would take, but this code of ethics 
is that broad outline. The county board chair would have to treat people with fairness and consistency and inclusion, right? So I, I think we've got the, the guts of what this should be in the language already without, as Supervisor Joukowsky says, making this a document that would you know, weigh a half a ton and have to be moved by a forklift. He, did, he, he didn't say half a ton. He had his head off of that. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I'm used to speaking in terms of tons, so that's okay. just my brain. So thank so you. That. <laughs> no, 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 never, never. I know. S Supervisor Pataki. Wow. You got your mute on, Stanley. Stanley, you're muted. Thank you. Uh, as Supervisor Joukowsky said, our, our corp council is busy. But the way I look at this, um, if we do have a supervisor or anybody who has a complaint, they should go to the county board chair. However, we don't have anywhere if there's a complaint against the county board chair. So I would think more at number two, for somebody to go to the corp council, it would be someone who has the, a complaint against the county board chair. Not you. <laughs> well, and I, I believe it, it, that that goes probably something else without saying, though, that it, we're, we're all supervisors first. So uh, anything in the, that goes to the Corp Council or even the complaint about staff or anything, it goes to Corp Council. So I, I don't know if uh, we need to spell out uh, in number two that uh, if you have a complaint against the county board chair, uh, that you take it to Corp Council. That should that should be probably something that's understood. Anybody else have any uh, Supervisor Gifford? Yeah, we commenting on the whole. Uh, Go ahead. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Now um, that's what I want to speak to, and direct it to the uh, members of the public who came in to comment. And as always, I appreciate having uh, public input. All things considered, I'd rather have a lot of public uh, participation than not a lot. But this is a code of conduct for the county board uh, members. Yeah. So <clears throat> this code of conduct is not to uh, define how the members of the Portage County uh, constituency uh, or all the citizens are to behave themselves. It's not to tell uh, members of the public what to think or how to speak uh, among themselves or whatever. It's it's a code of conduct for for us to follow, and um, I just wanted to make that clear. You know, it's it's good to have a dialogue with the public about things uh, with which they disagree. <clears throat> And there's always the option every two years, run for the county board and uh, put up your own platform and set of ideas, values, beliefs, and uh, run on those, you know. Um, but once you're in the county board, you're gonna be bound by a code of conduct, that's all. Thank you. Anybody else have any other comments? Supervisors, Astro. Uh, if we look at the resolution itself under the fifth whereas, if I- Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. One, two, three, four, five. Go ahead. Okay. Um, it, it could just be me, and, and I wouldn't be shocked to see that, but does that read <laughs> kind of goofy towards the tail end of it? Uh, uh, the meetings who are either appearing or responding to inquiries or questioning from any harassment, insulting remarks or conversation. I guess I'm the word questioning, should it just be questions? I don't know. I'm... I'm asking if anybody else sees that. It just reads kind of goofy to I me. I think questions or questioning, if somebody's being questioned, questioning. Yeah, it just doesn't read right, though, in there to me. understand the meaning of the word, but... <laughs> is anybody else see that, or is it just me? If it is, we'll move on. Questioning. Go either way. You do. Okay. Thank you. Supervisor Neville. I think it's partly parallel construction and it should be responding to inquiries or questions. Are you making an amendment? But that would be a scrivener. Now that I have support, I'll make an amendment <laughs> to change questioning to questions. 
Yeah. It just needs Skir uh, Scrivener's. Yeah. Be a Scrivener's. I don't know. Okay, so that's not, that doesn't change the context of the yeah, resolution. Yeah, that would fall in that, so we'll take care of it. Dave will do that. And that's his, his so it was one that was brought up earlier? Yeah, I would say so, yes. But Supervisor Neville, was this one of one of the questions that you brought up earlier with Corp Council and no, but it, it was not falls. I felt in the same category, but I didn't see that no. until now. Yeah, that's fine. That. So our, we'll, we'll we'll make it sound better. And, we have the authority under the Scrivener rule because it's not totally changing the intent of it. Mildred had talked about a few items in here uh, and they will be corrected and changed so. so I don't need to make a motion I withdraw my motion so I can send out a copy a final copy of it after it's all done there'll be a final copy sent out then to everyone after it's rewrite but Supervisor Neville did talk to Corp Council and the County Clerk on a few other items that did not change the intent of the resolution so if there's no other discussion I want to thank everybody tonight for this, uh, uh, Supervisor Neville. I'm sorry. On the next, the two more whereas's, the second whereas from the bottom. Um, the word unjustified, verbal accusation. Um, Let me. I mean, I guess I was just puzzled about. What 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 this was getting at? Like I didn't know what what kind of accusation would be justified. What's just what's unjust? I don't know. It just wasn't clear to me what this was getting at. else understands it maybe they could explain it they, mr. mr. chair I believe you could call the vote because the whereas is provide background information and are not part of the resolution um, they're not part of the resolution that goes on record um, they may be stored someplace but they are not part of the action we take they provide background information and I think what we were getting at there with that uh, word choice is, I mean, when you come right down to it, uh, to Supervisor Neville's inquiry, you can have uh, a justified accusation of somebody. I mean, if, if, if the exchange, again, these are all hypotheticals, and that's what we attempt to address to some extent in a lot of these whereas background clauses. but. If there's an exchange during a meeting and a supervisor, for example, or um, you know, make, makes a comment to anybody in attendance, be it a fellow supervisor, uh, staff, members of the public, and accuses somebody of something, and it's a completely unfounded, unjustified accusation. That's, I think, what we're trying to illustrate here. We're, we're, and we're saying that's that's a bad thing if people do that we don't want people to do that we want to encourage the opposite and I okay any other discussion I just I just wanted to say though that 
the whole intent of this was that not just one incident, not two, not three, not four, not five, maybe six. I've been county board chair for about a year and a half, or three years, I should say, and I've had probably five or six different incidents that have come up and uh, over that t term where people have reached out to me or expressed concerns about situations or how things were handled. They were surprised to find out we didn't have anything. I talked to people outside, they were su said they were surprised. And as I looked, other counties all had codes of conduct. We had a code of ordinance, uh, which addresses more or less monetary. Uh, and that would be, we had a supervisor a while back that had a business, we couldn't do business with him because of our code of ordinance, because they felt that someone could profit from it. That was about all that was in there. We don't have anything else that has any kind of rules that talks about it, or we wouldn't be doing this. So uh, a lot of this is, is trying to have something, a starting point, and it's trying to be able to have debate and have uh, discussion in a professional manner and make sure that everybody's held to the same standard. That is the main focus or the main part of the goal when we set forth to try and figure out what we could do and how we could accomplish this. And I appreciate everybody's input tonight because I think it was all very good discussion. And I I say this, uh, that I've tried to look at different ways to make sure that we've got 25 people that have a very different backgrounds and thoughts and, and upbringings and age groups and everything in, in this. And we're all here together to try and work to make sure that we can do what's best for Portage County. Sometimes it gets a little heated and we have to make sure that we can keep ourselves controlled even in the uh, separate meetings, whether it's the county board meetings. And hopefully this will help to do some of that. There's other counties when their code of conducts, they had monetary up to $1,000 fines. And I, when I brought this forward, I thought that ah, was, was a little off. And basically what this comes down to is a, a public shaming is, is uh, if someone, uh, has to go before the committees, and again, it's we do have a, a a kind of a ethics committee, and it's the executive operations plus two people from the public are brought in uh, to that committee as well, and those people decide whether it rises to the to the uh, an offense or not, and then it's just a letter that says that you shouldn't be doing what you're doing, and please behave. That's about all it is, and, and we're not here to try and curb anybody's input. We're, we want to hear from all the supervisors. We're not trying to make sure that anybody is stifled. So I just wanted to make that, that clear and, and understood some of the background that goes along with this. So if there's no other questions or comments, uh, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor with aye. 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 Opposed. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Hi, well, Supervisor Jankowski. Just want to remind the supervisors that Space and Properties Committee meets tomorrow at 3.30 at the jail. We will be touring, looking at the uh, deficiencies that we have and some of the deferred uh, projects that need to be addressed. So 3.30 tomorrow at the jail. We'll do adjourn. Thanks for reminding me, Don. <laughs> I got a motion by Supervisor uh, Zastro to adjourn, uh, seconded by Supervisor Dodge. All those in favor of aye? Aye. aye. We're adjourned. <laughs>